thank you for joining me once again because today I'm testing this. The Tamron SP150-600 G2 f5.6 to 6.3 zoom lens. Now, I recently purchased it for £900 and I think the best way to test and ultimately judge it is to compare it to my Nikon 300 with and without the three Nikon teleconverters. Those being the 1.4, the 1.7, and of course, the two times. You didn't really need to see them, that was something else. I'll be seeing how both systems deal with birds in flight, as well as portraiture, so we'll be shooting both handheld and by using a tripod. Now, I'm gonna use my Nikon 70-200 at 200 mil to see if, using the computer to crop the images taken from the same shooting position as the other two lenses gives us equal quality. That'll be absolutely fascinating and I've not seen anything like that. Okay, finally, there'll be a bit of a bonus at the end, but enough talk, let's get to it. Now, it's starting with some garden birds at 600 mil with the Tamron. Now, there's a couple of things I think you need to know. Firstly, this lens was released back in September 2016, and that means it's now a five-year-old model. That said, it's a relative newcomer compared to today's test oppositions. More about that though as we go on. Secondly, all the images in this video are JPEGs and they come straight out of the camera. The Tamron performs better than I thought it would at 600, but I'm not getting as many keepers as I'm used to. Probably about 50-50 at the moment. But I'm trying to adapt to using a 600mm lens. And even though I'm using a tripod, every movement makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, you've seen how the Tamron worked at 600. Let's see how the 300 works with the two times converter on it. Let's do it. Now, interesting factoid. The Nikon Times 2 converter Mark III was released in 2009, the same year as the 300mm lens I'm using. Now, whilst these images may not be the most inspiring or exciting, they do serve the purpose of providing this test with consistent shots at the same place and in a real world type scenario. Comparing these photos to the ones previously taken with the Tamron, what do you think? Now, the reason I'm not really talking about these images up till now is that I want you to make up your own mind about them. I mean, what happens if we really zoom in? The images that I used for this video were chosen fairly randomly and mainly for their similarity in both structure and camera settings. And we are starting to see a difference, but it's not conclusive in either direction at the moment. Okay, I'm now going to change the Tamron lens to 510 because that's what you get when you add a 1.7 teleconverter to a 300mm lens. <laughs> okay, easy as that. The 1.7 Mark II was released back in 2004 and it's often considered to produce far better quality than the two times converter, as it doesn't have to magnify to the same extent. Compared to the Tamron, it seems to be somehow brighter and sharper. But let's not write off the Tamron just yet. There's still more testing to do. Okay, now we're gonna turn the zoom down to 420 mil. Why? Because we're gonna fit the 1.4, and that's what we get when we fit it to the 300. Now, before we do that, I need to disclose I'm using the Mark II version released back in 2001. It's basically the same as the Mark II released in 2014, except it misses an additional rubber ring at the back and retains the mechanical linkage that's needed for it to work with the older lenses and that are were still sporting an aperture ring. Anyway, enough of that, back to the pictures. Yet again, there's a general agreement that although the 1.4 gives the least magnification, it also affects the quality least. However, I'm not sure why, but I found the 1.4 and the 300mm combination seem to struggle to find focus. The Tamron appeared to be pretty consistent throughout its zoom range, but I will be putting those focus speeds to the test in a minute or so. As for quality at 420mm, I can't fault either of them. 
Of course, the one thing the Tamron can't give us is the F2.8 that the 300 mil will give us. So let's see what we're missing. Now I use this lens at 2.8 for portraiture whenever I'm outside and whenever I get the chance. But is there a huge difference in what you've seen so far to these? Do you know, it often depends on how careful you are with the background and the distance between your subject and the background. Okay, finally, we need to see how both of those lenses compare to the 70 to 200 if you simply crop it in. Okay, I'm going to still be using the FTZ adapter that I've been using throughout, so I'm not going to use the Z70 to 200, I'm just going to use the F mount. Okay, let me slap it on here and see what we get. Now, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this video or just want to know when my next video is out, please please just reach forward and click the subscribe button. It'll cost you nothing but a second of your time. Thank you, now back to the video. Well, I'll tell you what, that's making you think, isn't it? Better than you thought? Yeah, I was amazed as well. I mean, look how much we have to crop into to get the same image. That shows the quality of the Z62 full frame sensor, I reckon. So the images look good, and compare well with both the Nikon and the Tamron? But were they really as pin sharp when you get up close and personal? The answer is, well, almost. But sorry guys, the glass just gets it. The cropped images are just a little soft and have a noisy background when you look really closely. And what's the point if you can't blow up and frame your favorite shots for the wall? Okay, you've seen the pictures and you've probably come to a few conclusions, but it's only part of the story and we need to see how well it performs with birds in flight. And so we will. But first, let's look at how fast both lenses work. I'm gonna go outside now and give it a go. So this is my focus speed test setup. I'll be focusing on A, which is set at eight yards or 7.3 meters if you're in Europe, then B at 16 yards or 14.6 meters, and C is the large tree about 90 yards or 82.2 meters away. The overcast afternoon light was not great, let's be honest, but let's not make it too easy, eh? So first we're testing 600 mil from both the Tamron and the Nikon. The signs incidentally are from my old friend Jamie's business and they are perfect for this test. Fairly natural colors with a few contrasts for the focus to pick up on. Although I'm trying to keep to the same rhythm with each lens, converter and zoom setting, it's actually quite difficult. And if one of the lenses falters, it's always one step behind the whole sequence. The Nikon just wouldn't focus at all, so I just moved on. I think the Nikon seems faster overall, but when it struggles, boy does it struggle, making it much slower than the Tamron, which appears to be much more reliable. Mind you, now it's looking a bit slower in here, isn't it? Let's be honest, neither is particularly impressive at 600 mil. The Nikon and the 1.7 looks to be more snappy, but not hugely faster. The Tamron looks smoother. I would say that it's not a dead heat, but quite close. The new Z teleconverters are going to be a worth a test, I reckon. That's if you can get hold of one. London Camera Exchange has got a limited stock at the time of writing. Now, don't forget that the Nikon has been using the FTZ adapter throughout this test, and that's bound to slow it down a little. I previously noticed the Tamron gives a much warmer image than the Nikon, and it's really noticeable during this part of the test. Both lenses are better focusing at 510 than at 600, but you have to be patient. Maybe I'll be spoilt by the speed of the 7200. That said, the 300 on its own isn't exactly sluggish. Maybe I should have shown that for comparison. I'm sure you'll let me know below. 
The 300 and the 1.4 converter seem to be slower mechanically. The lens is often searching one way than the other, whereas the Tamron seems to choose the correct way to rotate every single time, or pretty much so. Something that's really obvious is the slight juddering at the end of the focus cycle. It only happened with the 1.4 300mm combination. And although you can see it faintly in the video, through the camera it felt really bad, as if the lens was bouncing off a rubber stopper before finally coming to a halt. It was a real judder. I wonder if we've discovered the difference between the Mark II and the Mark III 1.4 teleconverter. Ah, that was a good one for timing, but the Tamron was much slower at focusing. As I said before, it seems to be smoother, Maybe not as snappy or sharp. Mind you, it snapped to focus that time. Did you see that? That's what I meant about the judder. And I tell you what, it felt worse than it looked. Okay, so we've done garden birds and portraiture and tested the focus speeds. Now for the action or flight images. I have to emphasize that these were all shot at 600 mil using both lenses. I also used various shutter speeds, aperture of about eight, ISO 2500 to about 4000, but don't forget that they're all done at 600 mil and the images are straight out of the camera. You've probably heard me describe lenses as pointable before and the Tamron is undoubtedly pointable. It goes where I point it smoothly and without much effort. This makes tracking birds in flight so much easier. Now, as far as those flight shots are concerned, the Nikon 300, FTZ and Z6 II combination, as well as the two times converter, is just too tiring to hold for any length of time. I'll tell you what, mind you, the images aren't looking too shabby, are they? Now, don't forget that you lose f-stops with both systems. What do I mean? Well, with the fixed aperture Nikon 300mm lens, that's relative to the teleconverter size, whereas the Tamron isn't aperture fixed. So do you remember the start when I quoted 5 to 6.3, f5 to f6.3? That's because it changes as you zoom in. So because the Nikon already has 2.8 to start with, that means when you add a teleconverter at 600 mil, it's at 5.6, whereas the Tamron is way out at 6.3. Now that's not a huge difference, I grant you, but, and here comes confession time, this video was actually shot over a number of days due to Storm Barra. The light kept changing and I really wanted all the lenses to be tested as consistently as possible. I'll tell you what, my light meter has been working overtime to make sure that I give you the same type of light. And because this week has been pretty changeable, to say the least, we've had rain, we've had snow, we've had some really high winds, and it's when you're shooting in those type of conditions that giving away those f-stops becomes increasingly more frustrating. And I'll tell you what, one stop can make all the difference. Now, I guess the one question that I haven't yet answered is, what's the Tamron like with this? It's very own two times converter. I nearly couldn't find it then. <laughs> it's very own two times converter. It's the TC X20. And it was designed apparently exclusively for the Tamron SP 150-600 G2, which we've been using. It also works with the Z with Tamron 70 70-200, 100-400 too. I bought it secondhand from MPB for about £307, and it apparently it would be new for about £500. And I tell you what, if that seems expensive, it is. Especially seeing as you can get a new Nikon TC 2E Mark III, which is what we've been using for about 470, and 230 used. However, if you want to use the Nikon converter with our SP lens, well, you can't. Those canny people at Tamron made sure that your Nikon won't fit their lens. However, the good news is the Tamron appears to fit the Nikon lenses. I've certainly tried it with a couple and it seems to work. So it seems a fitting addition to this video to see how well it works with the lens, especially because it's the lens it was designed for. 
And I'm thrilled to say that in the sun, it's pretty stunning. Why is the sun important? Well, the first thing to notice is the maximum f-stop, f13. The lens combination is now 1200 mil, so in theory, that's the minimum shutter speed. I played it safe with 2000. Now, unfortunately, that means this setup is really only usable in good light. So it's not particularly practical for the UK. In fact, this video was delayed by four days as I was waiting for the clouds to part so I could actually take these pictures. Now, time for my conclusion and summing up. I came to various conclusions. Firstly, when I was hand-holding the camera with either system, I had to shoot at a much higher shutter speed than I'd originally thought. Well above the focal length rule. You know, the one about the times of the lens, size of the lens, the shutter speed should be either one higher or the same. Anyway, that's even using the lens's stabilization system. Though I think there's possibly more to do with my poor technique with a larger lens than the fault with the lenses themselves. So I'll tell you, here's a bit of advice. If your first impressions are, oh no, this lens is really soft, either slap it in a tripod, gently, or more gently, press the shutter button, or keep practicing. You see, it's really easy to get overexcited when you see the perfect shot to hammer the shutter button down before you lose the opportunity. And all you're doing is jolting the camera and as I've said before, any movement is obviously hugely magnified with the lenses we're using. And while we're talking about handheld technique, I have to hark back, I'm afraid, to the problem with the weight of the 300 mil setup. It's okay once it's on a, on a tripod. If you're hand holding it and you're trying to take photographs of anything in flight, I weighed the Nikon 300 and times two combo and it's just over three and a half kilos or nearly eight pounds. That's the same as a fat white tailed jackrabbit or three and a half liters of Diet Coke. Yes, I've done the research. So next time you're in the local shop, Pick up a couple of two litre bottles of carbonated soft drink of your choice and carry them around in front of you for an hour, pointing them at flying birds, and then you'll see what I mean. It's really heavy. I could use the Tamron pretty much all day. Now, I was thinking about this. I wonder if there's an imbalance caused by the Z6 camera being so light. I haven't noticed the same problem when it's on my D5, and I use the, the, the lens quite a bit. I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. Who knows? Anyway, whatever the cause, there's no getting away from the fact the 300 lens, two times converter and FTZ together amount to quite a lump to point skywards. Secondly, heavily cropping into 200 mil images is no replacement for using bigger glass or converters. You heard it here, we proved it. It's close, but no banana. You see, you won't get the same result as a 600 mil lens because you can still crop that in. If you have to crop in already, there's only a finite distance you can crop in. So you can see the differences. Now, if you remember at the start of the video, I said the Tamron cost me about 900, and I've been thinking about costs. If you balance that against the price of the three Nikon teleconverters, you'll soon see that the Tamron Zoom is pretty good value, to be honest, because to buy all three, the 1.4, the 1.7 and the two times, but they total up to about 1,399. And you've still got to get a lens to attach them to. Even used, they'd set you back for about 924. As a secondhand 1.4 Mark III is so rare and it loses very little money. No one wants to sell them once they've got them. So as I've said before, the images that I've used for this video, and I know I'm gabbling on a bit, I don't want to bore you guys, they were chosen the the images were, they were chosen fairly randomly for their similarity. And of course I took some that were out of focus. But I saw no point in showing you those. They, it could have been because of movement blur, camera focus error, and my error. And to be honest, I was surprised that I got such a high percentage of 600 mil keepers by the end, both with the Tamron and the Nikon. And it was about 65 to 70 once I got used to it. Now, let's be absolutely frank. Neither combination is ever going to satisfy a pro-nature photographer. 
and they'll certainly never, never ever replace their £11,000 worth of F4 600mm or even the 500 F4, which is currently going for 9199 10000 guys. But for the rest of us, it doesn't matter whether you choose the converter path or the Tamron. I'll tell you what, both systems work flipping well. I'm stopped gabbling now. Thank you so much for joining me. And yes, I'm going to repeat the same old mantra. If you like this video, please like it. And if you really liked it or want to know what my next video is, please, please, please click the subscribe button. It'll cost you nothing, but it means a lot to me. Take care and see you soon.